the 2016 international tennis star Maria Sharakova, I believe I probably could be pronouncing it, Shapakova, something like that. She got busted uh, because she was found to be po tested positive for a drug called melodonium. Uh, melodonium was pr uh, previously an esoteric drug, certainly wasn't known to Western athletes, uh, but it, it, uh, it turned out later, uh, later uh, uh, information revealed that there was quite a few of the Eastern European athletes that were using melodonium. Now the question is, what is it about melodonium? Uh, why would they? Why would these uh, athletes be, be using uh, mel meldonium? I'm sorry, it's meldonium. Why would they be using it? Now, mel well, what is meldonium? Meldonium was discovered uh, around 1970. It was produced by a company in Latvia, uh, and it still is. And um, it has a couple of properties which uh, athletes thought might be useful. Uh, uh, and um, but the actual medical indication is to treat what they call cardiac ischemia, which is a lack of uh, oxygen to the heart. It's also used to treat heart rhythm irregularities or arrhythmias. So you could say basically meldonium is a heart medication. Uh, now, the, uh, according to the medical literature, meldonium differs from a lot of other cardiac drugs because it doesn't come with a lot of side effects. However, it has not been studied you know, it's kind of an Eastern European drug. It's not available in the United States. It was never approved for, for use in the United States for the same reason that clenbuterol wasn't approved for the u use in the United States because the these particular drugs don't show any real advantages over currently existing drugs that were approved by the Food and Drug Administration. And as a result, drug companies feel they can't make enough money uh, off these drugs like meldonium and clenbuterol so they don't go. They don't make, uh, uh, sponsor the necessary animal and human studies that are required to get gain FDA approval to sell these drugs in the United States. Uh, so uh, you know the um, uh, you, you, the uh, meldonium is available in, like I said, Eastern European countries like Russia, Ukraine, Moldova, Belarus, Azerbaijan, and Armenia. Uh, it can also be ordered through the web. I've seen quite a few websites that are selling meldonium because of its reputation as a PED or performance enhancement drug. Now, one thing I want to say right off the bat is that um, it, it, is, it is a useful drug for if you have ischemic. Well, let's talk about what happened to Sharapova. Uh, she got busted for using this, but she had been using it for 10 years because she had a heart rhythm disturbance. Uh, she said it had something to do with a genetic inability to use magnesium properly in the heart. That's what she said. But in other words, she was using it as for a medical indication. She wasn't using it as an ergogenic aid. That's what she says. The other athletes, I don't think you could say the same thing for. I think they were using for an, uh, using a meldonium as an ergogenic aid. Uh, now, the thing about meldonium is uh, it, it might be useful for certain sports, because what it does is it, it actually, the basic way it works, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with the substance carnitine. Carnitine is an amino acid byproduct made from lysine and a couple other amino acids. The main function of carnitine in the body, uh, in the body is to shuttle long chain fatty acids, kind of convert them into short chain fatty acids, and then it kind of uh, push them into the mitochondria where the fatty acids are burned. This is fat oxidation. It's called beta oxidation. However, the burning of fat within the mitochondria unavoidably produces a lot of oxygen byproducts called free radicals, which could damage not only the mitochondria, but also cells outside, you know, other cells, you know, in other words, other parts of the cell besides the mitochondria. Now, what meldonium does is it inhibits an enzyme needed to produce carnitine in the body. So to put it simply, meldonium blunts the production of carnitine. Without carnitine, the fatty acids can't get into the mitochondria, which lowers the oxygen use of the mitochondria and produces less free radicals, uh, but it also inhibits fat oxidation. Now what happens to the fat is it gets shuttled to other structures called uh, peroxomes, 
uh, where it's the fat is utilized there. However, since carnitine, the carnitine shuttle, if you want to call it that, is the main way that the body oxidizes fat within cells, within the mitochondria, uh, what happens when you take meldonium is there's a greater uh, focus or uh, uh, kind of the body kind of moves towards using a greater amount of carbohydrates. It's called glycolysis. So the body uses more carbohydrate uh, instead of fat. Now, the, now, this results in a decreased production of lactic acid. Now, lactic acid has a reputation of, uh, of causing muscle fatigue, but uh, for several years now, scientists have known that it's not the lactic acid that causes muscle fatigue. It's the acid part of lactic acid. Lactate is actually a useful energy source. Lactate produced in muscle can exit the muscle during exercise, travel back to the uh, back in the blood to the liver, where it's converted into glucose in a process called gluconeogenesis. And then as glucose, it goes back in the blood where it becomes a useful source of energy. But in other words, lactic acid, the acid part, does uh, inhibit energy-producing enzymes in muscle. Meldonium, because of the uh, lowered production of oxygen, that's uh, a, a feature of meldonium, it, you get decreased production of, uh, of lactic acid, and you get an increased proximal utilization of fatty acids rather than through the carnitine uh, uh, you know, passageway. Uh, you also get improved storage and utilization of glycogen with, with meldonium. Meldonium, uh, I mean, glycogen is your primary energy source. Glycogen is a complex carbohydrate. It's the main form of carbohydrate stored in the body. Glycogen is stored in the liver and the muscles. The glycogen stored in the muscles can only be used by muscles. Uh, because it lacks a certain enzyme that allows the glycogen to be broken down to glucose and sent into the blood. Liver glycogen can be broken down into glucose and sent into the blood uh, to maintain blood glucose levels. Uh, as I said, because of the uh, uh, because, uh, meldonium, uh, uh, because of uh, interference with carnitine and fatty acid, uh, fat fatty acid oxidation within the mitochondria, you get lower oxidative stress which uh, take, uh, it, it, uh, you also get lower oxidative stress in the heart. The heart is loaded with mitochondria because mitochondria are, are the energy producing structures in the cell. And as I said, you know, a, by, a byproduct of mitochondrial function, especially when it comes to burning fatty acids, is you get a, uh, is a greater use of oxygen and, and oxygen byproduct free radicals, which can damage cells. Now, uh, the net effect of meldonium for an athlete would be increased endurance, aero aerobic capacity, and work capacity. And that, that's why it's favored as an ergogenic aid among athletes. It also improves heart activity, takes a little bit of the strain off the heart, uh, you know, especially athletes who, you know, who, uh, endurance athletes put a lot of stress on their heart. Meldonium will take some stress off it. Some studies show that uh, it, it, uh, it helps accelerate recovery after exercise, and it also, enhances activation of the central nervous system. So um, now, because of uh, the publicity with Sharapova in 2016, the World Anti-Doping so <laughs> World Anti-Doping Association, World Anti-Doping Association, WADA, they banned the use of melodonium in sports in, a year later in 2017. So melodonium is a uh, banned substance. It's a PED that's banned in sports. In other words, if you uh, compete in sports that are drug tested and, and you come up positive for melodonium, you're disqualified. It's that simple. Now, the obvious question, a lot of the people that are looking at my videos, I'm sure you're, in, you're, you're, inter, you're not necessarily an endurance athlete. Uh, I mean, uh, melodonium seems to be beneficial to endurance athletes, but what if you're not an endurance athlete? What if you're just a bodybuilder or somebody involved in fitness that doesn't focus on endurance? Uh, should they consider taking melodonium? In my opinion, no, because melodonium, remember the main uh, function or the main mechanism of melodonium is to inhibit carnitine synthesis. And carnitine is absolutely crucial for fat oxidation. So when you take melodonium, uh, you're going to inhibit carnitine and you're going to get much less fat oxidation. So melodonium is a terrible drug to use if you're trying to lose body fat because it inhibits fat oxidation. Why would you want to take this drug? 
So, uh, you know, as far, again, uh, what else can I say about melodonium? Let me think here. I think it's, uh, that's about it. Uh, uh, it's also been, let's see, uh, let me see, what else, uh, the other medical, uh, it's also used for heart uh, f failure. It's basically a heart drug. Uh, that's the best thing you could say about melodonium. It's a heart drug, and, and now you know why it's, uh, oh, one thing it does do, uh, melodonium, because it inhibits carnitine, carnitine is in converted by uh, intestinal bacteria and certain liver enzymes into a substance called trimethyl uh, TMA. Uh, and TMA is associated with, uh, uh, some studies say the TMA is associated with increased atherosclerosis, atherosclerosis and possibly even kidney disease. That's kind of uh, iffy. It, it's not, uh, there isn't a lot of, it's not a definitive uh, evidence for it. Uh, however, uh, you know, this stuff melatonin does because it blocks carnitine. Carnitine is the precursor for TMA. It'll lower TMA, but there's a lot better ways to lower TMA than taking, uh, car than taking uh, melodonium. For example, you could take garlic, you could take pterostilbene, which all, all this lowers uh, TMA, and you could take a, a, a substance uh, in coffee. Uh, in coffee, uh, there's a substance called tri trigonaline. Trigonaline lowers TMA by 85%. So, you know, forget about the TMA with uh, melodonium. You don't need it. So I'll sum it up by saying that uh, you know the way the, uh, as far as melatonin, uh, melatonin, mel, god damn, mel, mel, meldonium. As far as meldonium occurs, uh, you know it might be of use to endurance athletes, but it is a banned drug. If you get caught using it, you're going to get disqualified. If you want anything like a medal, it's going to be taken away from you. Uh, it has to me, it has. Uh, I don't know why anyone in bodybuilding would use meldonium when you know one of the main. Uh, 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 let's say uh, goals in bodybuilding is uh, fat reduction. Anybody, you know, most people want to reduce body fat, and this is a drug that inhibits body fat uh, reduction. Uh, so I don't think it has any real use in bodybuilding. And the only reason I'm making this video is because somebody requested information on melodonium. This is a melodonium, so that's why I made this video. So I'll leave it at that. Useless for bodybuilding, possibly of use for endurance uh, sports. You can get it online. It's not, it's not sold as a drug in the United States. It was never approved. Uh, and uh, like any drug, it does have side effects. So be aware of that, too. It's not completely safe. So if you want more information on nutrition, exercise science, anti-aging research, ergogenic aids, hormone therapy, supplement science, which supplements work, which ones don't, women's health and fitness, uh, subscribe today to my Applied, Metabol my Applied Metabolics publication. It's at www.appliedmetabolics.com. It's, it's uh, 30 to 40 pages every month, no ads, no BS, just pure evidence-based information that includes my over 60 years of constant study and experience. Uh, as, as I, I, I've looked at other digital publications, and I, I know at the risk of uh, hubris, I have to say I don't think anything come clo comes close to the depth, the in-depth information and extraordinary information offered by my Applied Metabolics. I cover off-the-road topics that you won't find in uh, many of these blogs, and certainly not in many of these YouTube videos. It's uh, it's it's kind of it's an excellent uh, uh, it's an excellent resource for personal trainers or anybody who wants to know the nuances of nutrition exercise, who wants to have like I hate to use this expression, who wants to have a deep dive. It's like such a cliche. I hate to use that, but it's true. If you really want to know the real in-depth information about nutrition and exercise. Read Applied Metabolics. I guarantee you'll learn something. And when you subscribe, send me an me email, and I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolic Facebook page, where each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise, and general health. I have an email portal on my Applied Metabolics uh, webpage, where current subscribers only can send me short questions about anything they read in Applied Metabolics or anything they're curious about related to nutrition and exercise, and I'll, happy, I'll, I'll answer their question and appreciation for this subscription. You could look at it as like a bonus to the subscription. Uh, and uh, so that's about it. I, th I think uh, if you think, please subscribe to this channel. Uh, it's Jerry Brainham uh, YouTube channel. I, I post a new uh, video every Tuesday. Uh, it's free. This this uh, channel is free. So and please let others know about the existence of this channel. 
And I think that's all I could say here. And uh, except if you want to have the best friend you love have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. There's so many beautiful dogs, uh, you know, in shelters. It breaks my heart to see these dogs, you know, being put down. Healthy dogs, nothing wrong with them. They're just being put down because the shelters are overcrowded, and they, they kill dogs for only for to make room for new dogs, which to me is pathetic. And and to me, I know that some people might criticize me for what I'm about to say, but to me, the way they kill dogs in shelters is just exactly the same as what occurred during the Holocaust, where innocent human beings were being killed for no reason, no reason. These are these are good dogs, and you know it, it, it's especially heartbreaking because having had about five dogs, I'm going to get another one eventually. Eventually, you know, I'm having some certain problems right now where I'm waiting to get over with, and then I'm going to get a dog. But uh, having had several dogs, I could tell you that the, all of them were a little bit different. They all had their own personalities, but the one thing they all had in common was they proved the adage that dogs are truly a man's best friend. All of them were my best friend. They did a lot for me. They, when I was depressed, they cheered me up. Uh, they prevented me from getting lonely. Uh, you know, do dogs are the most loyal animals in the world. And I've said this before. Again, I'm going to be criticized for this. I mean, you know, you can get married and, you know, you love your wife, your wife loves you, or you have a girlfriend, blah, blah, boyfriend, whatever the case may be. There's no guarantee with human relationships. I'm telling you, the people that love you today can hate you tomorrow. That will never, ever happen with a dog. A dog is loyal to you from the minute you get them until the minute they leave this earth and go to what they call the Rainbow Bridge. So please, please go to your local shelter, pick out a dog, large one, medium, small, makes no difference. They're all terrific. I promise you, you'll never find a better friend than a dog. Thank you for listening.